Hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Joe. Um, I, w I want to kind of answer some questions and uh, clarify things when it comes to the site structure, site linking structure um, for new websites as well as existing websites because a lot of people either get this wrong, don't implement this, or there's people out there that kind of explain it but they don't really break it down because it is a little bit confusing. And I feel like the best way to do that is to kind of just have you on this like really basic whiteboard here and, uh, and show you the concept behind it. So the concept behind it, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is that, let's say, we, I'm going to use the blue, blue marker here, blue pen. Um, we are here at the homepage and we link out to different pages. Obviously, we have the service and what we do, you, pro you, pro you guys probably won't see that. Let me, uh, that's the eraser. It would help if I uh, got the right pen, wouldn't it? Right. So we link from the home page to services for argument's sake. Service pages link from the service page to service one, service two, service three. The home page links to the blog, to the about us section, to the contact section and to the FAQs page for argument's sake. Let me just clarify that there. So that's the basic site structure that most websites have. They have their homepage where everybody lands. Then, you know, you pick an option in a navigation tree or a navigation menu. That takes you to, for argument's sake, services. And then they filter through a list and ultimately end up on the contact page or they pick up the phone and give you a call. So the way that you basically get them there is kind of like the golden ticket. It's not really the be-all and end-all, but it's important and it helps search engines understand your website. <clears throat> so if I zoom out just a tad here uh, and move the camera down, or move this whiteboard down, move the screen, what you would typically see on a website is what we have at the moment. So homepage, links to other internal pages, links to blog about, contact FAQs, etc. What a lot of websites do now is they have a header element. So something up in the head up here where there's like a call to action. And that button will take them either to about us to learn more. Nine times out of 10, it takes people to the contact page. And then from the contact page, they contact you or the website owner, that business, etc and make the inquiry, they make a phone call, they send an email, they fill out a form, etc. And most companies neglect the fact that they can use these service pages. This is where it might get a little bit messy and a little bit confusing, but they can use the service page to navigate to the contact page, or they can have a persistent button up here on the top right or the top left. They can have a persistent button that navigates them to the contact page or it can trigger a pop-up. Then if they mention one service, it can link to another service, or it can link to a contact page, or it can link to something genre-specific. I've got gen-specific, gen-specific two, gen-specific three here. And the way that's done is with anchor text. So let's say uh, serve one is anchor text. Whoops, can't type. Service one is anchor text specific. So whatever someone is searching for, that anchor text in the body of the copy somewhere relates to something that they may be trying to acquire, some kind of information, some kind of service, some kind of product, whatever that may be. And that links them to the gen specific page, that genre specific element that they're looking for. Because service one is kind of encompassing, just as an example, and then Genre specific is where they want to be. And then genre specific links them to the contact page. And the way that you want to do that is with anchor text that's relevant. So let's go over here and type in uh, relevant, whoops, relevant anchor text. So you want to use relevant anchor text where it makes sense, not just for the sake of it. I see a lot of websites doing it for the sake of it. 
where it makes sense. Can't we increase this? No? Okay. Well, we'll just move it. But relevant anchor text where it makes sense. So there's no use me, I don't know, um, using anchor text on this page here, somewhere where I mention, I don't know, souvenirs that I brought back from China when the page that it links to is something to do with automotive repair. You want to have the anchor text, for argument's sake, read something like automotive repair, whatever that specific thing is. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And then things in your blog post. Let's say you have just six blog posts at the moment. Your blog is linked in such a way so that these can all reach it. I, again, I apologize. It's going to get kind of messy, but site structure and linking, especially internal linking, can be a little messy. I just think this is probably the easiest way for you to visualize it. And let's say that post one references that gen-specific uh, topic, and it also encompasses one or two things in gen specific two or gen specific three general uh, words or genre encompassing words. So I would take, you know, the specific word that I'm wanting to mention that is relevant to the gen spec page, that genre specific page, and link to it. Maybe it's somewhere near the top, wherever it is, and link these pages together. The same with other posts. That way you're passing information from certain pages and telling search engines, hey, this topic is featured on this page because it's linked to it via this anchor, anchor text. Um, and then the same could be done on things like FAQs, you know, if, if there was something to do um, with service three and service two on that page, you would link those given the correct anchor text. Don't go absolutely overboard with this stuff. You can see that this is already a mess visually. So in your mind, it's gonna be a mess. I would advise keeping like a spreadsheet of stuff. Um, but the takeaways in general are to use specific anchor text that's relevant. <clears throat> use text with, whoops, with key, why is caps lot not, not working? Keywords or synonyms, I think that's how synonyms are spelled. If you want to use the correct anchor text, relevant anchor text, use the keywords and cinnamon, uh, cinnamons and synonyms to link to those pages and pass information where applicable or relevant. So only pass the information or pass a link to relevant pages and relevant information. You don't need to have like 50 freaking links in anchor text all mentioning the same thing 50 times. One or two links is usually more than enough. One link is perfect in my opinion. But you don't want to go absolutely overboard with this stuff. You just want to let um, bots, when they crawl a page or crawl the website, know that, hey, service specific thing number one mentions this genre specific thing. This text links to that page. That page has information about that or is relatively informative covering that topic. Or perhaps it covers the entire topic. Anyway, guys, if that's helpful, then I did my job correctly. I know it's kind of messy and uh, <laughs> looks like uh, looks like there's a lot going on there. But in retrospect, there is a lot going on. Um, just keep in mind that the takeaways are using specific anchor text that's relevant, using the right keywords and synonyms, and then passing the relevant information from said page to another page to help a user navigate to where they want to be and ultimately either convert into a customer or find the right information that they're looking for. If you're not doing that, then your website's not working correctly. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try and uh, answer those questions for you. Thanks a lot, guys. I will catch you in the next video.